What's up everyone, in today's video I am going to be showing you how to make your VS Code theme look as sexy as mine. I will be showing you how I customize my coding setup and what extensions I use to make my coding workflow go smoother. So now you will be seeing my VS Code setup go completely blank. I will be resetting it and showing you how to set it up in this quick video. So let's get started with the customization. The first thing I would install is the theme Tokyo Night. It is a pretty good theme which I have been using for a long time. So once you install it, it will provide you with three options. The first one is the Tokyo Night, the default option. And then you have the option for Tokyo Night Storm. And then there is a light version. The light version is pretty harsh on the eyes, so I don't use it. Uh, I'd recommend go with the Storm version or the default one. I like the default one because it's a bit dark and provides a good feel to my eyes. Uh, so that's up to you which, which one you're going with. So let's just set it up. Uh, the next thing I would install is uh, the extension called Material Icons, which provides a pretty good icon set for these file extensions. So go with the first option and install Material Icon themes. And when prompted, choose Material Icons from here. Now you would see that all the icons have been changed. Uh, this, the, all these icons are coming from this extension and they have a pretty vast uh, like collection of uh, file extensions supported. So you would find some icons for most of your files. The next set of extensions I would install is for some kind of analytics to know what projects I'm working on and how much time I've been spending on them. So the first extension there would be worker time. I hope I'm pronouncing its name correct. So please pardon me if I'm not. Uh, install this extension and to set it up, you would need a worker time account. So just go to workertime.com. Here's the dashboard, but you can just create an account over here and it would provide you with the API key. Once you have the API key, you can press command shift P and just type worker time. So you have the API key section and you can put your API key over here. So it will start tracking what projects you are working on and how much time have you, you have spent on them. So the next extension would be Discord presence because of course we want to flex on our friends to show them how long we have been working on our projects. So just go ahead and install Discord presence. What this extension does is, so I'll show you by reloading VS Code. So I close VS Code and reopen it. So as soon as I reopen it, it would show on the bottom screen that it's connected to Discord. So whenever I come to Discord and check, it just started showing me, uh, showing me I'm active on Visual Studio Code. So uh, let's say I just start uh, editing this file. It would show that I'm working on app.js file over the workspace and the person who is watching my profile, he can press the view repository and just check what project I'm working on. So these extensions were for analytics. Now we would go on to install some extensions for IntelliSense, which is some code completion we would want to uh, use while coding. So the first extension would be, of course, GitHub Copilot because it's the most advanced AI tool to write code. So go ahead and install it. So once you have installed Copilot, you would have to search up Copilot over the command palette and you have to configure it and you, you would need a uh, GitHub account which has a uh, copilot preview enabled for you. Okay, so the next thing which I work is with Tailwind CSS. So if you are a Tailwind CSS user, you would I would recommend you to use the Tailwind CSS plugin. So it is an IntelliSense for Tailwind CSS, which provides code completion for CSS classes, which are there in Tailwind CSS. So just go ahead and install it. And once it's enabled, whichever project is using Tailwind CSS, it will have the code completion right there. And also since I use Docker a lot, so I'll go ahead and install the Docker extension, which just brings up a section over here where we can manage our images. Like as soon as I uh, turn on the Docker server, I would see what are the containers and images that are running and we, I can control them from here itself. And also it provides intelligence and code completion for the Docker file, which I'm working on. The next pretty good uh, extension I would show here is Thunder Client. So it is a Postman alternative, which is built right into VS Code. So as soon as you install this extension, it would add an icon over here, using which you can uh, write API requests and just use it like you, you would use Postman. It is a pretty good tool. I use it mostly because it's inbuilt into VS Code and I can perform any kind of get request, put request, any kind of API actions over here right within VS Code. So for example, let's say if I'm working on my API over here, I would just have to go into this tab to test the API and the response headers and everything. So I don't have to install any other tools like Postman to do the same. So it's a pretty good extension. So now I am done with the simple extensions that I use. The next thing that I would show you is how to customize 
the fonts over here in default VS Code settings. So for example, inside the application, we can use custom fonts, but how do we use custom fonts for the UI of the VS Code? So for that, you can follow me, but first you would need a custom font, which you want. I am using Mona Lisa font over here, which you can get from Mona Lisa .dev. But since this is a paid font, if you don't need it, you can actually get Fira code, which is available for public use and it's free. You can get this from Google fonts. I'll put the link in the description. So let's go ahead and install some extension to tweak the UI of VS code. The first thing I would install is customize UI. So make sure you are installing the one by IO gave. So once you install it, it would need monkey patch too. So this extension is binded with monkey patch extension. So once you install it, it will ask you the permission to install monkey patch and configure it. So you have to press restart and then you would be able to use its features in the settings. So you would have to press command comma to come to the settings. So now here you have to search for font and scroll down all the way to customize UI. So here you can see the customize UI has given us the option to change the UI fonts. So I have added Mono Lisa to both the section, both the monospace and regular. So if I remove them and it will ask me to reload the window. So as soon as I reload the window, you will see that the default fonts by VS code has been applied, but we need to use Mono Lisa font. So what we do is we'd scroll down back to customize UI and add the regular fonts over here. So now we can reload the window and you will see that Mona Lisa font has been applied the same way you can do it for Fira code if you have the Fira code on your system. So that's a pretty good way to apply the changes to your VS code theme to make it look a lot better. Now another customization that I would show is changing this cursor icon to be a bit smoother. Right now it's pretty janky, I would say. So you can come to the settings and search for cursor and over to the cursor blinking, use it to something like face. So what the face would do is it will make it blink uh, with some transition. So this is pretty good, but it actually doesn't feel that smooth because when we change lines, it still feels janky to make this thing a bit smoother. You would have to scroll down in the cursor section and apply the cursor smooth carrot animation. So what it would do is it would make it a lot smoother while you switch lines with the cursor. Now this is pretty much it with my VS code setup, but for, if you're a web dev, you should keep watching because I'm going to recommend some of the extensions built by my friends, which will help you in your web development journey. So the first extension would be, oh, let me come to the extension section. Mm -hmm. So the first extension would be express JS snippets. by Aditya Singh. Oh, okay. So now you can install this extension. What it would do is if you are working on a server, it would give you intelligence and some custom uh, pre-built template for the, all the get and post requests, which you can use to make your workflow faster. So this is one of the extensions. The next extension would be react and next JS snippets. This is another extension by Avnish Agarwal. Once you install it, you can uh, get started with uh, React and Next.js projects quickly because it will give you pre-written templates for working on different components. So that's a good addition to your workflow because it can help you write code faster. So this was it for the video guys. Uh, I hope you like the way I set up my VS code and supercharged my workflow with the extensions I told you. So if you liked the video, you can let me know by commenting down on this video, subscribing to the channel or sharing it to your friends. You can also join me on discord on the Genix flow server. I will leave the link to the description below. So this was it for the video guys. This is Gaurav signing off. <laughs>